Hey Morten. Hey. It's great to meet you in person. Nice I've watched so many you. of your videos and it's great to actually meet you finally. The key reason that we're here is uh, there's a couple of different styles of photography that we both have and we obviously want to try and blend those together and try and learn from each other I think. Are you really excited about trying to find some good wildlife shots or do you think you might be excited to try some new stuff for landscapes? Because you've not done a massive amount of landscapes in the past, right? I think Scotland is magnificent. It's so beautiful, it's so wild, it's so different from Denmark where I come from. And for me, it'll be if we could find some stacks to photograph together. But mostly, I think it's really good for me to team up with a landscape photographer and look over your shoulder and to be able to see what are you doing, how are you using your equipment, how do you use filters, I'm really looking forward to it. And from my side of things I'm really excited to see the way that you track and, and stalk animals and so on, you know. I'm really excited to get started so let's jump in the car and let's go. Let's do that. Cool. Obviously you've been shooting with the Z9 for a while now. What are your thoughts, you know, what have you been using this camera for and how have you found it? Is there anything in particular you really like about it or is there anything that's kind of surprised you? I knew before the camera launch, before the rumors, before I had any knowledge that I would like the camera. I use big lenses, I like a, a more heavy body sure. to get a balance and I like more function buttons, I like, like a bigger layout with room for more better customization. Now my fingers are starting to get used to the position of these buttons and the function buttons. Some of the things that I really like about the camera is that the autofocus is so much faster and the way it now allows me to track the eyes of animals, uh, birds and stuff, that is what I use it for. The result of that is just the fact that I get photos that I otherwise wouldn't get. Having so many photos per second yeah. is nice, but for me, the ability to actually customize how fast is fast. Yes. Because I do not always want 20 no. photos per second. Like today, photographing the stacks, I put the, the low to eight and the high to 12 yeah. because they're moving slower. How did you get on with the 100 to 400? Oh, look, when yeah. I first came here, I had this, that was what drew my attention and made me run up here, that, that hazy, backlit haze up yeah. there, so the ridge came up so like that. Yeah. And then within like 30 seconds, it went from this, the sun got too, yeah, yeah, and then you can see, it's just gone. Yeah. Because yeah. it's been so windy as well, the light's just changing all the time yeah. around the cloud covers moving all the time, which I love yeah, from a long too. exposure. It's really nice. It makes it difficult to get shots like that, but the longer focal length of that 100 to 400 really helped to kind of pick out that yeah. V in the mountains, right? Yeah, let's just hope but, that they kind of like, we get a little light again. Yeah, no, I see think what so. We can get. I think so. I think as this cloud moves in, we'll get a really nice mix of light throughout yeah. the day, so it should yeah. be good. From a lens point of view, you've obviously been shooting with the 100 to 400 recently. How have you found that so far? I want to be as light and compact as possible when I'm traveling with my sure. gear, when I'm in nature. So I basically need two things. I need something that is super fast, super sharp, good in low light and with a long reach. But then at the same time, I need a flexibility. Sometimes when you sit down, you like commit to that location. Yeah. You can't just move around no. and from the same location, I need to be able to shoot wide so I get the animals in the environment and at the same time get close. And the 100 to 400 does most of that for me, but what I love about that lens is the fact that it's so silent. Mm. So for the first time now, I can actually record the audio from the animals that I'm photographing because of the fact that the stabilization in the in lens is so quiet and because the autofocus is quiet. Again, bringing down the amount of equipment, I actually use it a little bit for macro. Nice, because uh, nice. it focuses so close. It has a really nice close focus. Yeah, it does. It? Yeah, and I think so, that, you know, that's where even using teleconverters can really come in because you can use teleconverters yeah. with the 100 to 400 and the teleconverter won't change the closest no. focusing distance. So when you do want to do those close-up detail shots, <clears> when you're waiting for the wildlife yeah. to appear, then you can obviously get some really cool stuff with that yeah. as well. The 400 2.8, this is obviously the first time that you've been able to use the 400 2.8. It's the first time you've actually seen it in person as yeah. well, right? So what are your initial thoughts, your first kind of hands-on experiences, and you know, is this a lens that you think you'll start to want to add to your camera bag? This lens is like one of the things that you wish 
and you think, why is it the first super fast telephoto lens with a built-in converter? Because it's it's so good. It's quiet like the 100 and 400. The two things that I really, really, really like about this lens is that I can handhold it. Yeah. It's so light. Mm -hmm. And this is the feature that I love the most. Being able to basically have your finger going like that yeah. while you're photographing, you have two lenses in one. It kind of covers my need from having a flexible lens in yeah. a way. Physically, it is still a relatively large lens, but considering the fact that you have a 400 at 2.8 and you then have that built-in teleconverter, which gives you that 560 at f4, yeah. it is just those kind of two lenses in one, right? So it is quite a flexible piece of kit all yeah. around, really. When it comes to the kind of landscape side of things, I've generally been shooting all my landscapes on a 14 to 24, yeah. whereas you've been doing a lot of landscapes on that 100 to 400. Yeah. And that's when it comes back to that kind of flexibility, but it's a completely different lens for landscapes, yeah. right? And um, hopefully you've enjoyed that experience today yeah. and just kind of learning how to um, you know, maybe tweak your composition here and there just to yeah. get some really nice landscape shots, yeah. but still with a longer focal length. So hopefully that's been a good experience with yeah. you shooting some landscapes with that today, really. So we're here shooting sunrise. Now you can see the sun's coming up behind us here and that's gonna give us some lovely light on these mountains on the other side of this lock. You can see that I'm shooting with a wide angle lens. So I'm using a 14 to 24 with a set of filters on the front, mainly because I'm going for a long exposure. Morton, however, is using a 100 to 400. He's going for a much longer focal length. Now, it might not sound obvious to use a longer focal length for landscape for everybody, but there's some really good opportunities to use a long focal length like a 100 to 400 for landscape shots especially because we had a moon rise this morning as well and we were able to get some nice shots of the moon rising just next to the mountains. So it's one of those things where you can either go wide or you could go for a longer focal length and we're just trying out both here. It's a really good testament to how different photographers can shoot the same scene but still get completely different results. So I don't know if you can see but as quickly as these clouds are moving across, yeah. that's what I'm looking at really. I'm not really worried about smoothing out this foreground because you could do a quite a short exposure as you know, yeah. you'll smooth the water out here. Yeah. But the cloud movement is why I really want to shoot a really long exposure. And then in the final image, we should get this really nice draw of clouds oh, yeah. across the sky. So the last oh, shot that I yeah. took, that oh, you yeah. can see that it is a movement, that's at 60 seconds. Just ah. that movement of cloud just really draws you in. Ah, it looks pretty good. It's like the filters are what let me shoot for 60 seconds. And if I couldn't shoot for 60 seconds, I just wouldn't get that movement. In the cloud, yeah, so. I reckon when, when you're on 40 millimeter, they are moving relatively slow. That's yeah. why you need the long. So that's why you also need the long exposure. But you can see that my camera's tilted up so high yeah. and that just drops my horizon down really low. Yeah. And that's what emphasizes the sky, it makes it look like it's a massive sky. Yeah. Whereas if my camera was tilted down, I'd have a massive foreground. So yeah. that's how I shoot with a, a wide angle. My horizon very low or my horizon very high, depending on if I want to emphasize the sky or the foreground. Yeah, awesome. Previously, you've not done a massive amount of landscape photography. Any landscape that you do do is generally based around longer lenses. Yeah. So what's your kind of favorite part of the landscape side of things from today? I think for me, the best thing about shooting with you, photographing the landscapes here in Scotland, is the fact that it has been really nice to learn from you. Yeah. And you know that feeling when you get inspiration? Yeah. I kind of feel a little motivated for doing some more landscapes. But That's great to hear. Yeah. yeah. Cool. I think I will go that way around to the left, see if I can cross the rivers so I can get some, like, get a little closer to them. I don't know what you are you going with me I or think, are you doing? I think if I go the opposite way, yeah. and then if they push through those trees, we can get some really nice shots from both angles and it just oh, covers all the different directions. Yeah, maybe you can get, like, yeah. try to get them with the trees and then the yeah. stack, something yeah. like that. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah. let's yeah. do that. I'll see you soon. So, Morton's over there to my left hand side, he's on the other side of the river. I can see the stag's actually right in front of me here. I can get a really nice shot with it framed between the two trees. I'm going to try and shoot nice and low because the ground rises up in front of me. Gives this really nice kind of out of focus foreground area. So I'm going to try and add that in the shot if I can. Hopefully it stays where it is. I can see Morton's over on the left hand side. He's moving forward as well. So I'm going to try and move forward and see what I can get and hopefully we get some good stuff. So when it comes to the shots that we've taken, wildlife stuff first of all, 
for me, it's just really good to see a different wildlife photographer shoot a different style or shoot mm -hmm. in a different way because we effectively had the same camera, the same lens, same subject, yeah. same weather, yeah. <laughs> um, but we, we could end up with you know almost two completely different shots. And then obviously when it comes to, you know, even just the idea of just looking and watching you kind of stalk the, the deer and kind of track them and find that type of stuff was really cool, right? So you can go and just take shots of deers, but you stop then including that process of finding the subject and following the subject and getting them in their habitat. Mm. I think that was a really cool added aspect to it as well. Is there something that really stands out to you from kind of a wildlife photography point of view? The moment where we like crossed these streams yes, and I thought that the wind was coming towards us, everything was perfect until I realized that it actually changed and I realized, oh no, like they are having our scent. That was why they kept and I thought, yeah. we are without a chance. So expectations were extremely low. Yeah. I had the feeling that the moment I took the first step, they would be gone. And then, of some reason, you know, probably because the wind was going around, we just got closer and closer and closer to the point where I thought, okay, now it doesn't get much better. <laughs> and at that moment, like, the skies just basically opened. Yes. That was so intense. I, I, I love that. Okay, so Morton, um, we've got a break in the clouds that's just past us and we've been able to shoot some astro stuff and hopefully the clouds are going to break again. I know it's raining right now, but as we've seen over the past couple of days, the weather's been blowing through really quickly, right? Definitely. So I know that you've shot astro stuff before. I've done a lot of astro stuff, but there's a couple of modes that I'm right in saying you might not have used yet in the Z9 that I just want to talk you through. And the first one of those is Starlight View. So if you've ever shot astro on like a Z6 or a Z7 before, what can happen is that the display can always be kind of almost not really showing you you what your composition is so it can be quite difficult to try and get the composition of the sky or something with a foreground and you might have to use a torch or something like that but with starlight view it really kind of boosts the view that the camera gives you on the back of the screen and that allows you in really dark situations to still get a really good composition now don't get me wrong it's not going to all of a sudden light up the entire sky but it does make it easier to try and get compositions especially if you're dealing with a foreground and a background interest in like an astro style shot We've tried to do a bit of astro stuff, right? And yeah. um, one of the things you said to me is, is that um, you go to all these great locations where there is you know, the opportunity to shoot stars, but again, because of the lenses you like to take with you, it's not mm. always the easiest thing to do with longer lenses, right? No. So the real side of the astro thing really is just some of the things that have been added into the Z9 that makes it just a little bit easier. Yeah. But it was great to get a couple of clear nights where yeah. we did get some clear yeah. skies as well. And it was great to get some kind of those wide angle examples so yeah. you can get in a lot of stars. Yeah. Hopefully you've also been a little bit inspired in yeah. capturing some of the, yeah, the night definitely. sky. Well, I've really enjoyed the past couple of days. Me and too. We've really captured some amazing images. It's always great to learn from ambassadors and it's always great to be able to help them, especially if they're struggling with something in particular. So yeah. it's been a great experience and I can only thank you so much. So thank you a lot. Thank you so much, Richard. No